Story time about my stepdad caught me sending nudes to my stepbrother. Disclaimer is not my story time on sending me on Instagram. Now my mom is dating my crush's dad. They made us spend the weekends together. Remember, at this point, I'm trying not to show that I'm actually in love with this guy. But now our parents are forcing us to hang out. Everything moved really fast with them. We got engaged two months later and then married three months later. So now my crush was my stepbrother. Oh yeah, and my best friend hated me for it. My mom and I ended up moving into their house. So now I saw him every single day. Can you imagine having to live with your crush? Like him seeing everything about your life? I was constantly embarrassed. And my best friend started making up rumors about me. He started claiming that I was the one with the ED. But after we moved in together, things changed. He started being very sweet to me. He stopped fighting it and we kissed. Everything was leading up to us doing the dirty. We were both sending each other nudes. And on one occasion, my stepdad caught me. I decided to tell him the truth. My stepbrother and I begged our parents to let us be together. Eventually, they agreed. We're both 18 now and we're engaged. We're getting married next summer. True love is true love. When my boyfriend and I are doing the dirty on his bed, I notice there's a little lens pointing straight at us. He goes to grab it and we realize it's a little camera. The whole time we've been doing stuff on his bed, it's been recording us. That's when my boyfriend Dan said that it must have been his crazy ex. Let's call her Casey. He had told me that she was really crazy, but I didn't think she was that crazy. Dan starts looking throughout his whole apartment and he finds two more little cameras. One in the kitchen and one in the bathroom. As you can imagine, we didn't sleep that entire night. Of course, we went to the police and they opened an investigation, but they said they couldn't find anything. A week later, I get a DM from KC, his ex-girlfriend. She starts abusing me through DM, calling me a bunch of names. She even said that I stole Dan from her, but I hadn't even met Dan when they broke up. Then she sends me a picture of my house, which means she knows where I live. I go straight to my boyfriend's apartment and when I open the door, guess who's there? KC is sitting on the couch with my boyfriend. It gets scarier. Part I was like, how am I homophobic? He looks at me and he's like, because you believe that there's only two genders. I was so angry in the middle of class and I was like, shut the fuck up. That doesn't mean I'm homophobic. Of course, my teacher noticed that we were arguing and she calmed me down. But I didn't care because he had really offended me calling me that. I know some people say I'm dramatic and I know I am. But she had no right to tell me who I am, especially if I was friends with her. I respect her and I would call her the right pronouns, but now I don't because I want her mad. I respect everyone else who is trans, lesbian, or gay except for her because of the fact that it makes her mad. After that, I would always be rude to her. And then me and Luke are friends with this one person, but she didn't want to get involved in it just because she's friends with the both of us. We'll call her Vanessa. So me and Vanessa were in class. I would say slime remarks towards Luke. I would be like, imagine being in the LGBTQ, but not knowing what homophobic is. I wasn't scared of them, and I would say it to his face. And eventually got to the point where he started crying, and our friends would try to calm him down, but then I would confront him, and he would stop crying. I'm no longer friends with Vanessa or with Luke, and I still fight with them so they know that I don't like them, but now I want to know if you guys think if I'm in the wrong. Girls, tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. I'll go first. Two years ago, I was walking my dog at the park and a man approached me and asked to take a picture of her. And I said yes, because why not? It's a picture of a dog. So he starts taking a picture of my dog and then I realized that he was like holding up her collar and then it hit me. My address is on that collar. He's not taking a picture of my dog. He's taking a picture of my address. So I told him that I actually didn't feel comfortable with him having, having a picture of my dog and I asked him to delete it. So he deletes it and then like starts walking away really fast. And I was like, excuse me, sir. No, could you also go into your deleted album and delete it from there? And he goes, I don't have a deleted album. And I was like, mm, you have an iPhone. Everybody has a deleted album. Could you please delete the picture? And he was like, sorry, I don't have a deleted album. And like keeps walking away. And keep in mind, this is like two in the afternoon in a park. Like there's other people around. So now I'm like chasing after him and I'm telling him, sir, I know you have the album. I will show you where the album is. Can you please go onto your phone so that we can delete the picture? Oh, part two. Sorry for the wait. The girl ended up seeing my last post and now she wants to fight, but I don't give a fuck. So anyways, I end up blowing her up on Facebook Messenger and got no answer. And I'm just sitting there like a lame, watching somebody else's kid, basically, and um, missing out on money. I end up calling my best friend and basically telling her what happened. She ends up telling me that she just seen the girl on Facebook Live fighting. I end up watching the live and behold, it's her. So at this point, I guess I'm playing babysitter. I didn't feel the need to call the police or anything because I felt like she would get her kid at least by the end of the day, which she did. Um, yeah, that was stupid of me, but hey. So she finally reaches out to me to pick up her son. She said her reason for leaving was because she got on Snapchat and she seen a snap of her baby daddy and another girl at a restaurant. And she was thinking in the moment and felt like she had to confront them right there and then. So you're just gonna leave your kid with me? Like, what? 
story time okay so this one day i was at school and there was this trans boy in my class he was a girl and he ended up turning into a boy we'll go ahead and call him luke so now even though i don't agree with the lgbtq i still respected people's opinions and their decisions now me and luke were really good friends until this one specific day when we were both in class he ended up pulling out a picture of bakuko and duko if you guys don't know what that is, I'm pretty sure like it's an anime show. So he turned around and he's showing me these pictures and I was like, oh, I don't really ship them, but that's just my opinion. So then after I said that, Luke started acting really uncomfortable and then they acted even more uncomfortable after I showed them how cute Raraka and Duke are. After that, she ended up acting more weird with me and I told her, I was like, well, I don't ship them, but I just think they look really cute together, you know? So then after that, when the period was halfway over, she ends up turning around and she tells me, I don't think we could be friends anymore. And I looked at her and I was like, really? Because of an anime ship? She responded and she was like yes but you're also homophobic i was so confused i was like wait how am i homophobic and then she replied because you believe crazy ass story time 23 years ago there was this mother of two children who just recently had a third child soon after the newborn baby was sleeping in the nursery while they were throwing a house party and unfortunately during the party the house caught on fire everyone scrambles out of the house and they couldn't get to the baby and then the cops concluded that the baby had died in the fire but her other two kids made it out alive and even though the cops told her that her baby had died she refused to believe it many years later the mother took her two children to a birthday party and there's this other woman there with her child and now the mother looks at that child and is in shock because she looks so much like her other two kids so she goes up to the little girl and says that she has bubble gum in her hair so that she can steal a few strands of her hair she took it to a lab and they dna tested it and that little girl was her child so it turns out many years ago during that house party a woman that the mother knew went upstairs took the baby and started the fire so that the baby would be declared as dead and she could easily get away with kidnapping her um and then she ran from extremely toxic best friend story time so when i was in eighth grade there was this boy and this boy would go around telling almost every girl that he liked her and i was one of those girls and he would do stuff with all of us and there were like 11 of us so we all hated each other especially this one girl and we're gonna call her abby and every time we saw each other we would be super mean to each other well, a year passed, we stopped talking to this kid, and I bumped into her at homecoming and basically apologized. So after that, we became best friends. And everything was good until, every time I told her about a guy, she would start talking to them. Like this one boy that I was snapchatting and talking to, she accidentally sent nudes to him and said, Oh, sorry, I meant to send them to my boyfriend. So then she called one of my other best friends and said, No, it actually wasn't an accident. And of course he told me because he was my best friend. So I was like, whatever, and stopped talking to the boy. And she did it again, like for part two. Finally, Chelsea is back. So many of you have been messaging me for an update, and I'm sorry this took so long to upload, but she's back with two months worth of growth. Absolutely no chips, just extremely long curved inward nails. To fix that, we decided to change her shape to almond, and because they grew out so nicely, I could make them more pointy, which is her preferred shape. Her nails needed some major work, I cleaned her crusties, and as many of you know, one of her middle fingers grows extremely crooked, so I had to fix that, and she let me this time. Oh, and by the way, we're doing a spring set today, telling you this because the rest of the video will be tea and unrelated to nails. The last time she came in, she told me her husband didn't like how long our appointments were because it takes time away from her being with the baby. During her appointment, she told me she put her foot down. She read all your comments and agreed that her nails are her me time and she's allowed to take time for herself to relax a bit. She's back to work now and she goes into the office every day but had to hire a babysitter because although her husband works from home, he can't watch the baby, which is understandable. He apparently got mad at her for wanting to go back to work. His assumption was that she'd be a stay-at-home mom saying his salary is enough for both of them. But Chelsea said she's never depending on a man again. Client story time part two. A lot of you were mad I didn't do it all in that one video, so I'm going to try and finish it in this one. So we tried to call and text her many times, but just could not reach her. And all of a sudden, her phone number became disconnected. What a coincidence. And then three months later, we get a call from a client booking an appointment. We ask, have you been here before? She says, no, this is my first time. We asked for her full details. And when she said her name, we knew it was her straight away. Plus, her name came up on our system just with a different number. We asked her, are you sure you haven't been here before? We have your name on file just with another number. She said, no, no, not me. I'm so excited to come. It's my first time. We played it dumb and waited for her to come because we knew it was her. When she came in, we saw her face and it was confirmed. It was definitely her. So we confronted her before she got her services done. 
in a very nice way and she was so rude about it she kept denying it took no accountability did not apologize she literally stormed out after yelling at us saying how could we do such a thing how could we say such a thing we're such an appalling salon she'll never be back she doesn't want to get anything done and whatever you can imagine the rest anyways take this as a lesson guys that if something like this were to ever happen to you take something more valuable than airpods plus there was only one airpod in the case anyway something like this has never happened again and will never happen again bye story time of how a client used to lie to me to get discounts on her nails where do i even begin this client had apparently found me through a close friend of hers who also happened to be one of my regular clients. Being the person that I am, I really love to start conversations and be in tune with my clients. In getting deeper into conversation, my client decided to tell me a little bit more about her life. Or at least I thought it was her life. She told me many stories about how she ended up homeless and how she was sleeping on her friend's couch. And in those moments, I really did feel bad for her. And in feeling bad for her, here and there, I would take a couple dollars off of her set. And she used to tell me that her way of paying me back was by wearing my nails in public and posting about me. She would return monthly to get her nails done again. But soon after, I caught on to her story. When my regular client, who she had said to be close friends with, would come in to get her nails done, I would often ask about her friend's well-being and health if I hadn't seen her in a while. My regular would proceed to say that she was perfectly fine and in good health. She had then asked me why I was so curious about her. I was a little confused as to why my client was replying that way. She would reply in a way as to if having no idea about her friend. At this point, I was so confused. As the conversation between me and my regular began to unravel, I began to put two and two together and I realized that her friend was lying to me about everything. Follow and like for part two. Hey guys, it's your girl Nails by Naughty and I'm not gonna lie, y'all ate that last voiceover up. So I decided to give us another one. But this time it's not gonna be a client, it's gonna be about my messiest breakup. So y'all, I was young and um at that time i had just got out of a long relationship like i mean middle school to like my first semester of college long so me and old boy met on tinder and i immediately let him know that i didn't want anything serious like i just basically wanted somebody to keep me company so you know he agreed to that and you know we for a while it was cool you know what i said like we was vibing out smoking and you know doing what young folk do and, you know, after a while, he started, um, like, you know, taking me on trips with him and his family. Like, we was doing date, like, um, gay nights and stuff with him and his cousins and their girlfriends and all this other stuff. And, you know, he was getting my nails done, basically. And, you know, he was, like, giving me money and stuff. So, like, he was basically just, like, you know, trying to let me know that, like, you know, he wanted me or whatever. And so one day, like, he kept bothering me about getting together with him. So eventually, you know, I was just like, okay, we could be together or whatever. So once we got together, you know, the relationship was cool. Like, I'm not going to lie and say it was terrible. And um, he started acting funny. So I started figuring out that another girl was in the picture or whatever. And then one day he broke up with me and, you know, I let him do him. And he got mad at me because I didn't want to chase him from breaking up with me or whatever and at the time he had a hoodie of mine so i was just like you know just drop my stuff off and you know all could be well or whatever so um i go on snapchat not even a whole week after we broke up and he posted another girl so me being petty i posted another one of my other options and my close friends and he started posting like subliminals about me on instagram and shit Mind y'all, um, before he even posted this girl, me and him linked up again and we ended up having the dude and he tried to trap me, y'all. Like he's literally the reason why I had to get on birth control because he tried to trap me like three times, y'all. But anyway, um, so I'm just like, um, yeah, so, you know, we, you know, we do the whole subliminal. Well, he do the whole subliminal thing, you know, the petty posting and stuff like that. We do that for about a summer. And then, you know, when it's time for me to go back to school in the fall, um, he made sure that him and his girlfriend, uh, booked the trip to Florida, 
um, the same weekend that I had to go back to Florida for school or whatever. So, you know, I was just like, oh, this is weird. Like, so I get to school or whatever and school is going by good or whatever. And he reaches out to me one day. He's just like, you know, I want to check up on you. You know, I was just seeing, you know, how you were doing and stuff like that. And then, you know, once I was just like asking him, I was just like, what do you really want? He tr- basically tried to get me to confess my love for him and stuff. And once I wouldn't do it, he blocked me. So I was just like, these niggas got the nerve. So I um went on my Snapchat like a week later. Y'all, tell me why this man girlfriend was literally following me on Snapchat. And she had been following me for a long time. I'm running out of time, y'all, like for part two.